I want to speak to you on the subject today. If you're watching online right now or you're watching from the other campus, we want to welcome you. I want to speak to you on the subject today. Who told you that? Who told you that? And I want you to think back. Maybe you were a child. Maybe you were uh, uh, a teen, maybe even an adult. Maybe even last week this might have happened to you. But but sometime, someplace in your life, somebody spoken something over you. And we hope people speak good things over us, right? But unfortunately, we don't always live in a world like that. You know, where sometimes things are spoken over us that, that hurt us, that, that, that sometimes even people didn't mean it, but man, it really, it really hurt us in a particular way. Maybe we were spoken over ourselves by things that we even said about ourselves, uh, things that we spoke over us, negativity, because we learned that from somebody else, you know? And instead of looking at a situation and seeing what God says about it, we begin to look at the situation and get down on ourselves and begin to speak things over ourselves. Maybe you've had somebody speak something over you that, uh, man, they were somebody close to you, even a father or mother or, or a coach. And you were headed down this path and you were excited about life and then all of a sudden something was spoken over you and, and it, it just, it just kind of stopped you from your dream or stopped you from your destiny. Maybe you've had things in your life spoken over you negatively all of your life. And, and man, you're coming to church. Maybe you've just gotten saved. Maybe you've just walked in here. And, and for the first time in your life, you're in a life-giving, a life-breathing church. And you're not sure how to handle that. <laughs> you're not sure how to look at that. Are these guys for real? Do they really believe this? Do they, do they really mean what they say? You know, I love the scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. And when things are surrounding you, you know, when, when you're going through things, when you're even being attacked by people that are closest to you, that's one of the hardest things to walk through and one of the hardest times to speak something good over your life. You know, when everybody else can't speak something good over you, how many know sometimes we've got to encourage ourselves? amen? Sometimes we've got to speak it over our lives. That was David. You know, the scripture said David was, was in great danger. And because of all his men, they were, they were bitter about losing their sons and daughters because they had been in a war. And, and they began to talk about stoning him. Now, nothing worse than being around people that you're close to that want to kill you. <laughs> That's probably the worst situation ever, right? And you're just sitting there, and, and I mean, if you ever wanted to lose hope, that would be the time, right? But I love what happened here. It's such a key thing. It's such a key tool to live out your life this way that when you're going on social media and people, you're looking at all these people are living these amazing lives and your life maybe doesn't look that way or, or when you, you go on there and you see the negativity and different things like that or, or, or you're around people that are negative, it's so easy to get down on yourself in that situation. But I love what the word of God says in 1 Samuel 36, what David did. It said, David found strength in the Lord his God. And here's the key. He encouraged himself. When nobody else will encourage you, sometimes we've got to encourage ourselves. When nobody else is for you, when, you, when, when you've done so much, and, and, and sometimes as parents we can feel like that with our kids, right? We, we've done a lot of things for our kids, and they're just not in that state of mind at that time. You know, they're thinking about their friends and all these other things. And we, and we go, man, a thank you would be great. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself and just say, you know, I'm a good parent. <laughs> I've done good with this child. You just got to encourage yourself. You know, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were living confident and secure with God. They knew they had his blessing and favor. But one day the enemy deceived them into eating the forbidden fruit. And immediately they were afraid. They literally ran and hid. And when God called out to Adam, he said, where are you? And Adam said, we're hiding because we're naked. Now get this. 
The Bible says Adam and Eve knew no shame until they were deceived by the serpent. You want to know who the number one person that tries to throw negative things on you is? It's the enemy. And he loves to start early in the morning, doesn't he? Right when you get up. Because he wants to ruin your day. He doesn't want you to have a good day. He, he, he wants you to change your perspective. You come out of Sunday, you get filled up. Pastor Ron's spoken. Man, you've, you've come into awesome worship, and I love our worship team here today. Aren't they great? And, and, and I'm telling you, you get up the next morning. Here the enemy comes in. Oh, he comes in right there. And that's what he was doing right here. He, he, you know, Adam said, we're hiding because we're naked. And, and, and the Adam and, Adam and Eve knew no shame until they were deceived by the serpent. Here's the key. Some of us are living with shame that God never put on us. Some of us in this room are living with shame God never put on us. We live it with from our past mistakes, from what people have said, what the enemy has said. Then God asked, who told you that you were naked? God was saying, I didn't put this shame on you. Who told you that? And God knew who it was. It was the deceiver. You see, the enemy loves to whip out what I call who told you lies. Right? You'll never be good enough. Maybe you've heard some of these. Maybe even this tough one. Nobody wants you. You'll never do anything with your life. I wish you were never born. That's a deep one, isn't it? People have been told that before. I wish you were more, now all of us have been told this, I wish you were more like your brother or sister, amen? Well, we've all been told that one, right? My sister, anyway. Uh, I'll work through it in my message, yeah. You're not smart enough. You came from the wrong family. How about this one? You never do anything right. You will never accomplish that dream. And these lies just continue. And once we hear these lies from a person or somebody else, guess who plays off of them? The enemy. And he'll remind you constantly of what was said to you at six years old or 10 years old or 15 years old. He'll remind you, and I'm 56, at 56 years old, all the things that somebody spoke over your life. So we have a choice right there. We've got to either believe what the enemy says or believe what the word of God says about us. And I love what 1 John 4, 4 says. It says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Amen? I love that scripture because, because nothing that the enemy can say against me is greater than what God says about me. What God speaks about me. But you've got to remind yourself of that. You've ever been to a circus performance, maybe we can bring the chair up right here. Or watch one on television. This is how the enemy works. You'd be familiar with the act involving a lion and its trainer. Anybody ever seen that? And the trainer comes out, he's probably in a, a cage and the lion's sitting on a stool and, and the lion's just sitting right there. And, and so the trainer comes out and he comes out possibly with a whip and, and, and usually a chair or a stool like that. Now, here's the thing with the lion and the trainer. Have you ever wondered, besides holding a whip, the trainer would arm himself with a stool, and you can put the lion picture up there, and point the legs towards the lion to try to distract him. And he points the legs of the lion, and it's interesting. This lion, this man-eater, this, this king of the jungle, he sits on that stool while this trainer throws a whip at him and he points a chair at him and he's immobilized. See, the whole idea is to distract the lion. You see, as powerful as this beast is, it can be immobilized by distractions. And if this lion, man-eater, is not distracted from time to time, it might just decide what's capable of and maul the trainer to death. I always wonder why that lion just sit there like that. See, the devil is like a trainer. And he knows that you have God's power inside you because the lion of Judah is in you. And he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Thank you. 
So what the devil tries to do is he tries to take your power and immobilize you with who told you lies. You'll never be good enough. You'll never do great things in life. You're just average. You came from the wrong family. And he tries to distract you. And if you take that in, you'll be like the lion and it'll mobilize you. You'll never take that step towards a dream. You'll never do what God has promised in your life to do. You'll never do those things. And the problem is, is this, and I see this all over. It, it happens to all of us. I've, I've had things spoken over me that have affected me. The problem is with some people, they've chosen the wrong voice so long, they don't know who they really are. Like the lion, they don't know what they're capable of. They've let the enemy train their mind. They've let people tell them what they're not and what they can't do. Well, I, I came from this family or I came from this neighborhood or I didn't have a lot, you know, and, and they, they let those different things begin to play in their mind. They've allowed circumstances to define them. Maybe that's you today. Mistakes. That's one of the big ones. Those mistakes from the past, they, they've let define them rather than move past it. Disappointments. You've had a disappointment in your life and, 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 and it stopped you. you. You live in fear at times because you're afraid the disappointment will come back. Now they've lost their passion towards what they were once going after, what that dream might have been. If you let these voices, these other voices play long enough, it will keep you from your destiny. And I wanted to tell you today, every one of you in this room has a great destiny. God has a great plan for your life. If you don't believe that, that's the enemy. That is not God. It will keep you from your destiny. And I, I always say this, it's important who you surround yourself with too, right? The people you surround yourself, even if they're close to you. I, I always say, stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution, don't they? See, you got to realize the only one that knows who you really are is your creator. Let me tell you what your creator says about you. He calls you a masterpiece. He said you've been fearfully and wonderfully made. See, my wife and I had to do that. When we were going through a very difficult time, when we were going through a challenge in our life, we had to choose that whether what people say, what the enemy would say, or what God would say about our situation. My wife and I, and I, I don't know if we can show a picture of my family. It, it, they're up there. This is my beautiful family right there. And uh, that's my son, Corey. And Corey is 32 years old, and he's a children's pastor in uh, Oklahoma. And I told the group the other day he's single, and we'll take applications after the service. So <laughs> he needs a good North Carolina woman. Amen. That's my daughter, Courtney. And Courtney is a director and producer, and she lives in Los Angeles. That's my son, Connor, and Connor is 20 years old, and you're gonna hear more about him. And that's my beautiful wife, Samantha, and we've been married for 33 years. Amen, come on. And that's by far the longest I've ever went out with a girl, so it's a big deal right there, right? Well, me and my wife, we had Corey and Courtney, we had a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old, and we thought we were done having kids. We had them when we were younger, and so we figured, man, you know, our kids will grow up, we'll go to college, we'll be able to travel, do different things. God has a funny sense of humor, doesn't he? So they were 10 and 12 years old, and we thought we were done having kids. And, and so I went and got that operation on Thursday to be done having kids, right? And then my wife came in crying on the following Saturday. And she said, you won't believe this, but I'm pregnant. <laughs> and then I started crying, and it got worse from there, right? And after we got through the shock, you know, we were really excited. It was so exciting. We were, we were going to have a, a baby. <laughs> and and my, my, my kids were really excited. When Connor was born, he was just like the other two kids. You know, he would, by the time he was two years old, he, he would play with other playmates when they had come over. He'd give us a hug and a kiss and show so much emotion. And he would say, I love you, Mommy and Daddy, and say so many words. But about... At two and a half years of age, within about two weeks' time, everything shifted. Where my son would play with other playmates, now he would go sit by himself and he would stir off the wall. Where he would give us a hug and a kiss and show so much emotion, now he stopped showing any emotion whatsoever and he would just look away. He wouldn't even look at us. Where he'd say, I love you, Mommy and Daddy, and he would say all these different words, now he stopped speaking altogether. 
The only way I can really explain it, it would be like if your child was in a bad car wreck and they were injured and one day they were one way and another day they were another way. And we didn't know what, what was going on. We didn't know what was happening. And so obviously my wife started searching that out and, 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 and we had just gotten to Lakewood at that time and, and it was almost like the perfect storm. You know, we, we had a big job there and then, and then here comes our personal life. And you know how that is when you're in your professional or your, your ministry and personal life and both of those are, are crazy and, and it's called the perfect storm, right? And it just kind of came together. And we were trying everything. We were taking them to doctors. We were taking them uh, uh, to all types of therapy. Uh, but when Connor stopped speaking, he knew he could speak at one time, but now he couldn't get it out. And so he would point to things. And, and, and he would point. If we didn't understand what he was saying or if he was just having a, a, a tough day, he would have these terrible meltdowns. Can't really explain how, how bad they were at times. But it seemed like over a period of three years, those meltdowns just got worse and worse. And I'll never forget my wife calling me on the phone. She, we had just been the doctor and a, 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 a couple months earlier, and, and she called me on the phone. She said, Craig, she said, Connor uh, has been diagnosed by Texas Children's Hospital with, uh, uh, he's on the middle of the spectrum so, with autism, so he's gonna need a lot of help. And I remember at that point, you know, here's where the enemy really loves to come in and tell you who told you lies. I remember the enemy just coming in like a flood when we got that diagnosis, right? It's always at the diagnosis point. And he has said, your child will never be like your other children. Your child will never do anything with his life. Your child will be worthless. And I had choice right there. I could even either listen to those voices but instead, I remember the messages of my pastor. I remember what, what God said about my son. Instead of listening to those voices as I was driving home, I hit the gas in my car and I drove home and I ran upstairs with my two and a half year old boy and I held him in my arms. I said, you are not a victim, you are a victor. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are more than a conqueror. See, I had a choice right now. I could either listen to those voices and let them play in my mind like a recorder or I could believe what God says about my son. And we're all going to come to those moments every day of our life. Every time you wake up in the morning, you have a choice of what voice you listen to and how it plays in your mind every day. Well, one day I was driving to work and my wife calls me. And these, these meltdowns over three years had just gotten worse and worse and we had tried everything and, and it just seemed like nothing would work. And, and I'll never forget my wife calling me on the phone and she said, she, she told me what happened. And she was in a grocery store and, and uh, in the grocery store, her, her Connor went all the candy off the shelf and, and she was trying to tell him no. And, and trying to put it back on the shelf. And my son probably had the worst meltdown he had ever had in his life in the middle of the store. And of course, people are looking at my son and, and saying, why aren't you disciplining your son better? And you know, that's just the human condition. They don't, people don't understand when something's happening like that. And my wife is just trying to make sure he doesn't hurt himself. And she literally puts her arms around him and literally has to drag him out of the store all the way to the parking lot all the way to the car. And she calls me and she says, Craig, I'm not sure if I could do this anymore. You gotta understand my wife's my hero. She's one of the strongest people you ever meet. You know, she was just saying that off of emotion, but how many has ever been there where I'm just not sure I can do this anymore? And I remember I was driving the car. It was probably the most intimate conversation I've ever had with God. It was like he was sitting in the seat next to me. And, and, and I remember I, I just began to have this conversation with God as I was driving. If people were driving by, they would thought I was crazy, right? Because I'm literally talking this, you know, right to God right next to me. And, and I, all of a sudden I just said, God, why? Not why we had our son, because we loved our son with all of our heart. Why? But God, we're trying everything. Why is he struggling so much? I'll never forget what God spoke to me. He just said, Craig, your child is not a burden. Your child is a gift. He said, you're looking at everything that's wrong with them. You're not looking what's right. I said, God, what do you mean? And he said to me again, he said, Craig, your child's not a burden. Your child's a gift. 
I said, God, what are you saying? He said, Craig, I'm gonna use your son to reach millions of people. Now, I'll be honest with you. Even as a pastor, I've got 28 ministers in my family. We got a lot of faith in there. I come from a hope-filled church like this one, but I couldn't see it. I remember picking up a ball of water in my car and I said, God, my son can't even ask for a drink of water. How's he gonna reach millions of people? And then God spoke to me four words, and these are the four words that God will usually speak to you whenever you're in the desert, whenever you just need that cool cup of water, whenever you're just looking for hope, he'll usually speak these four, four words. And he just said, do you trust me? And I, honestly, I, I didn't have a lot, a big prayer, something I could say to him, even as a pastor, I said, God, you're all we've got, but I trust you. And I, after I talked to him, pastor, I thought things were gonna get better. Guess what? It got worse, right? <laughs> The next three months, the months, the meltdowns got worse. The struggles got worse. I mean, I, and I want to encourage you with this. If you're going through a desert right now in your life, you know, I couldn't pray elaborate prayers. Many times, all I could say was, I trust you or I'd speak the name of Jesus. And I found out with God, that's enough. If you're going through a difficult desert in your life, if you could just say the name of Jesus. If you could just say, I trust you. Because my wife came calling from upstairs and three months later and she said, Craig, Craig, get up here. And I run upstairs and I said, what is it? And she said, Craig, I was putting Carter to bed. I was reading him a couple books. And she said, all of a sudden, I, I just prayed a prayer with him before I went to bed and all of a sudden he began to speak. He began to say one word after another word, one sentence after another sentence, one paragraph after another paragraph. <clears throat> now you gotta realize I haven't heard my son speak two words in three years. I said, what do you mean he began to speak? And she's crying and, and tears start to roll down my cheeks. And I said, she said, Craig, he spoke. And I, I said, what did he say? And so she walked me over his bed and she leaned over his bed and she said, Connor, say it for mommy and dad. Say it again. My little five-year-old boy looked up and in broken English, but he spoke the exact words. He looked up and all of a sudden he began to speak. And he said, this is my Bible. I am what says I am, I have what says I have, I can do what says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess, he didn't stop. I, I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. That was my son's first words he spoke. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. That was a big deal. What we didn't realize was, if you have ever watched our pastor speak, that's the declaration that we speak before every message. And it didn't matter if the message changed, that declaration was at the front of it. You see, we were bringing the DVDs home of our pastor speaking, and little do we know, Connor was taking those DVDs up to his room, and while he played and we didn't know it, he was watching every message. And even though the message changed, that became the first words that he spoke. You say, well, Pastor Craig, I, I've heard autistic kids can memorize a lot of things. I hear very few autistic kids memorizing spiritual declarations. And we knew God done something so I don't know about you, but we're criers at Lakewood, right? And so I, I speak at Lakewood and I show Connor on video saying his first words. And Pastor Joel, he's weeping on the front row and the whole crowd is just crying, you know, just because they've walked along this with us. Pastor Joel says, Craig, can I, I, can I speak about this? Can I show the video and, and tell the miracle? I said, absolutely. And so he spoke about it probably about two months later and that video went viral around the world and millions of people saw that video. And they started seeing us emails from around the world how our little five-year-old autistic boy had touched their life and how he'd minister them. Yeah. And sure enough, the prophecy in the car that, that our son's life would touch millions of people was fulfilled. I don't, you know, I don't know what you're going through today, but can you trust him one more time? Can you just speak the name of Jesus one more time? Can you allow God to work in that situation? You see, we had to begin to believe what God said about our son. We, get, we had to be, begin, and that's what God's asking you today. Who told you that you're not good enough? Who told you that you're just average? Who told you that you can't accomplish that dream? 
We were told that our son may never speak. Who told you that? I believe in doctors. I thank God for doctors, amen? Praise God for doctors. But let me tell you something. The final report ultimately comes from God, amen? Who told you that? See, those negative thoughts didn't come from our God. Don't let the enemy deceive you like he deceived Adam and Eve. You are a child of the Most High God. You need to let that wash over you today. See, Sam and I had to do that. See, when we were told what our son Connor couldn't do or couldn't be, God reminded us of who he created him to be. We were told he would never have a job. We were told he'd never graduate high school. We were told he would never live outside the home, but God had a different plan. With Connor, he, we were told, he, remember what the enemy told me? He said, your child would be worthless. Your child will never do great things. I had a second conversation with God. I was walking through Lakewood Church and he stopped me in the kids area. He said, look at what you're doing for typical kids. He said, it looks like Disneyland, but look at what you're doing for special needs kids. And I went and seen your kids area, it looks pretty cool. We didn't have that when I was a kid, right? And he said, Craig, those kids deserve the very best, just like every other child. He said, when you look in these kids' eyes, he said, who you're looking at is you're looking at me because when you do it in the least of these, you do it unto me. And he said, favor will follow you when your church begins to reach out to these kids and families because I'm not gonna let the church forget them anymore. I'm not gonna let the world forget them anymore. You see, just because of autism alone, autism, 10 years ago, one in 110 kids were being diagnosed with autism. And that's just one form of special needs. Uh, one, in, one in 110 kids were being diagnosed with autism. Now it's one in 36. It's an epidemic right now in our world. And there are millions of families like mine. So I remember God speaking to me and I didn't know what to do. So what I did is I pulled together some, I, 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 I knew God said I had favor. And so I, I found some of the top researchers. They were doctors from the University of Texas Medical Center. And I found them and I asked them to be a part of this task force. Then I found some top educators. And then I found some, the most important special needs parents. And with our ministry team for an entire year, we worked on what would become the Champions Club. And we didn't even know how ahead of its time it would be. But the Champions Club, the holistic approach, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So in the Champions Club, there's four stations. There's a physical therapy station, a sensory station, a creative learning station, and a spirit station. And the kids, teens, and adults are developed just like every other child. Little did we know when we launched this at Lakewood, we didn't know how many families would come. We didn't know where they'd come. Over 300 families started coming to Lakewood Church just because of the Champions Club. It transformed their life. And some of those families are still with us today, some of our greatest families. Here, I remember the enemy saying, your child will be worthless. And now there are 116 champions clubs in 23 countries, one on every continent. I'm not saying that to boast. I'm telling you, don't believe the who told you lies. You gotta believe what God says about your situation. You gotta believe what he says. You have to believe what God says about you. There are too many people that are more influenced by what people say they are or what people think instead of who God says they are and what God thinks, amen? If you don't know who you are, someone will tell you who they think you should be. And many times we accept the love we think we deserve or, or, or we think we get. But do you know that your words, the words you speak over yourself have power? What you speak over your life has the ability to bring blessing or bondage. As a matter of fact, Proverbs 18.21 says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. In other words, what you say about yourself and your situation can either bless you or curse you. Your words can become your reality. So what I do every morning, every morning when I wake up, I'm not joking, this is what I say, it's gonna be a great day. I say it every morning. I don't know if it's gonna be a great day. I just set the tone, man. It's, I pop out, but it's gonna be a great day. Sam doesn't, my wife doesn't know what's happening, right? And then I get into God's word. Your devotional life will dictate your emotional life. And then I've watched what God's begin to do, how we're now seeing these champions begin to do great things. We're Connor now because of the Champions Club, he can quote over 60 scriptures. He goes in and he launches Champions Clubs now around the world. 
and he speaks a declaration, he cuts the ribbon. Honestly, from an earthly perspective, I could have never seen it. I, I, I didn't see that happening. But we, early on, begin to speak what God said about our son. And here's what I love about 828 Church. Y'all are gonna watch the first Champions Club in North Carolina. And families are gonna come from the north and the south and the east and the west. And these families, man, they're dying on the vine. They haven't been to church for a long time. As a matter of fact, probably the most unchurched people group now is those with special needs. Because they're shut in, they're not going to church. Because of your heart. Because you're not believing what the world has said about special needs over the years. The stigmas. You're going against the grain, you're saying, we're gonna help these kids, teens and adults, ultimately, these kids become everything God created them to be. And I wonder when I come back one day, how many Connors I'm gonna look out here, I'm gonna see they're gonna change the world just like Connors gonna change the world. Where these families who haven't been to church for a long time, they're gonna be able to come to church and be a part of a community. They're, they're gonna be able to give and serve where they've never thought that possible. They're gonna see their kids accept Jesus Christ and they're gonna be baptized when they thought their child would never be baptized. And they're gonna experience things just like your other family. But you gotta start right here. You gotta believe what God says about you. You gotta believe what God says about you. Don't believe the who told you lies. I wanna close with this. Would you just bow your head with me real quick? Maybe you're in this room today and you'd say, Pastor Craig, Something was spoken over me, maybe in my childhood, maybe as a teen, maybe as an adult, maybe it was from somebody from work last week, and it kind of just stopped me. It, it, it kind of just overwhelmed me, and, and I didn't pursue something, or I let it affect me, or whatever it may be. You just say, I want you to pray for me because I'm not gonna believe the who told you lies anymore. I'm gonna believe what God says about me. And you lift up your hand right now and you'd say, pray for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made some mistakes in the past. I've, I've done some different things. Man, I let the enemy remind me all the time. And I'm not gonna let the enemy do that anymore. Yes, yes, yes. All of this building. I want our worship team to play right now. I wanna pray a prayer over you tonight, today. I wanna pray a prayer over you. And I'm gonna speak over you. If you've ever had something spoken over you, we're gonna see that shift. And we're gonna see God every day, like David, you're gonna encourage yourself. You're gonna find what God said. I want you to come and let me just speak this over you. So let's sing right now. And if you guys will come right now, if, you're, if you've lifted up your hand, I want you to come. It's wounded you in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, don't miss this opportunity. That's you. Right here in front. Come on. So proud of you. So proud of you. Yeah. Say, Craig, I've had something spoken over me before. And I could have done this. I could have accomplished that. But I've been dealing with fear. Let me, let's do this right now. I wanna just pray over you right now. Just put your hands out like this, like you're receiving something today. And I just wanna speak over you what God says about you. God, I thank you for each and every person that took this step of faith, that at one time, something was spoken over their life. And Father, we literally rebuke that. I mean, we push that back, God. That that had no authority. It has no authority over their life because what matters is what you say about them. And I pray that healing will begin to take place. I pray that restoration will begin to take place. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you're removing those words that were spoken over their life, Lord God. You're removing those words today and forgiveness and healing and hope. And Father, new dreams are being birthed right now over all those that have been spoken over in a negative way. It could have happened last week, Father. It could have happened a long time ago. 
go. But today is a new day, God. God, there's a shift taking place right now. And Father, I just wanna speak over them right now. I wanna speak what you say over them right now. Father, let this wash over them and it will replace the words that were spoken in negativity and it's gonna replace the words over them right now, Father. I speak over them now that they are a child of the Most High God. I speak over them right now that they are the head and they are not the tail. I speak over them that they're above and not beneath, Father. I speak over them that they will lend and not borrow. I speak over them that they're a masterpiece, that they're extraordinary, that they're one of a kind, that they're beautiful, Father, that God, they're well able. God, I speak over them that they're talented. If they've been, somebody's told them they're not talented enough, God, I speak over them that they are talented, that they are created, that they are anointing, anointed, they are amazing. Father, I speak over them right now that God, you want to do great things in their life. So I speak over them favor. I speak over them hope right now. I speak over them joy. Where sorrows come in, you said joy comes in the morning. Joy is coming right now for them. All those times where they've let those words bring them into sorrow, you're replacing that with joy, Father. I speak over them right now, Father, that they're wonderful. That they and this is a big one, God. I speak over them that they are approved. They are approved. They are approved. They are qualified. They can do great things in life. I speak over that them that right now. And in Jesus' name, every negative word is lifted that's been spoken over them and it's being replaced right now by what you say about them, by how much you love them, how much you care about them, and the great plan that you have for their life. I speak dreams, I speak miracles, I speak new doors, I speak God, so new relationships, I speak Lord Jesus finances, I speak Lord Jesus healing right now in their body. I speak these things over them today because we're gonna believe what you say in Jesus' name. And if you receive it, say, I believe it. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. God bless you today. Thank you so much. Jesus. Let's honor Pastor Craig. This trip made no sense for him. He flew in from Argentina on Tuesday, spoke at Lakewood on Wednesday, got on a plane on Thursday to come be with us. Because Jesus really does love us. And he believes in us. And I wrote a poem. Leo, come and do the wrap up. I don't, feel, uh, I don't feel anybody feeling like they're in a hurry right now. The presence of God is so real. Grammatical, lingual, dialectical, the language we speak with our words, words that build up or tear down a human, lives shaped with what's spoken or heard. Things we hear or say really matter. Words are a gift or they're not. When they come with compassion and wisdom, 
they're more likely to hit the spot. Don't let words spoken in error be the words that direct or defeat, but the words that come from the Father. Believe, believe with great faith. Don't retreat. The best choice, listen to Jesus. He hung the planet and stars. He spoke the world into being. You are who he says that you are. You're chosen, you're cherished, you're woven. For his life, his love, and his plan, you're made for a miraculous purpose. He said that, only he can.